Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute History videos and today I'm on a little street in Bolton Hill called Malster Avenue. I live just a few blocks away and have never heard of this before doing this video and I'm betting many of you haven't heard of it either and that's uh, excusable. Uh, it is a little tiny street one block long sandwiched uh, between the Maryland Institute College of Art and Interstate 83 and there's really no reason that most of us would have to come back here except if you are searching for the remnants of the Mount Royal pumping station. And that's what I'm doing uh, here today, what we're going to talk about. have to start with a quick thanks to my friend and neighbor, Kevin Cross, who did the research for this. Uh, Kevin is a Baltimore history research machine, so thank you, Kevin. Okay, well, let's start with the obvious. There is no big pumping station behind me. Uh, it was built in 1899 and demolished in the 1950s to make way for the highway. But there is this little stone column behind me, and then a couple little ornamental concrete nubs on the ground. The stone column marked the entrance, the drive into the pumping station, and the little nubs uh, marked, I believe, a footpath into the station. Um, and But let's start with not the pumping station itself, but how we got a steam-powered uh, water pump here in Baltimore to begin with. Of course, people have been carrying water from low areas to high areas from time immemorial in gourds or animal skins or buckets. The ancient Greek mathematician Archimedes invented the uh, iconic hydraulic screw, the Archimedes screw, uh, that helped with agriculture back then, pumping out uh, low-level uh, uh, agricultural lands. Um, the Dutch, much of whose country is below sea level, uh, used wind power to pump water, um, the iconic windmill. Uh, are examples of those. And then in the Industrial Revolution, the English invented a steam-powered pump. I believe right around 1700, they were using that to pump water out of mines. But, but by about 1820, they began using uh, steam-powered pumps uh, in their uh, safe drinking water system. Some really great examples from that era are the Streatham uh, engine in England and then the Woda, I hope I'm saying that, pump uh, in the Netherlands, which I believe is still using steam uh, to pump water there. We got our first steam pumps in the United States. The first one was in the 1750s. A gentleman named Colonel John Schuler uh, bought one from England to pop, pump out water from his copper mine in New Jersey. And then a gentleman, Christopher Coles, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, invented one using parts found here in the United States in 1776 in New York. Although sadly, the British destroyed it when they occupied New York City during the Revolutionary War. Um, maybe the most well-known example of a pumping station is the uh, Chicago Avenue pumping station on the Magnificent Mile in Chicago, next to the Chicago Water Tower. Um, I hope uh, uh, many of you have been able to go and take a look at that firsthand. Our Mount Royal pumping station was in the same vein as these grand civic structures that were functional but had magnificent architecture as well. Ours was built by a gentleman, Henry Bronze, an architect who is one of the founders of the American Institute of Architect, the, the Architects, the Baltimore chapter. Our pumping station, uh, functional, yes, but also with beaver dam marble, so really a magnificent uh, building. Its opening in 1899 was a big to-do, including remarks uh, by our then mayor, uh, William Malster, the same gentleman who gave us uh, the name of this street. The way it worked is it was part of this system where water was pulled from the Gunpowder River into Lake Montebello. From there, it flowed down to Lake Clifton and then downhill from Lake Clifton through an enormous uh, pipe to this pumping station where it was pumped up a little bit uh, to the lake in Druid Hill Park where it would then flow downhill into people's uh, faucets and bathtubs and whatnot. Um, now, when it was completed in 1899, we already had three reservoirs uh, here in uh, the sort of central and western part of Baltimore. In 1858, we uh, took what was then Swan Lake and dammed it up to build what we now call Lake Roland, pulling water from the Jones Falls River. Um, then downhill from there, the Hamden Reservoir, which is no longer there. It's where uh, the park is at 36th and Falls Road, a skate park, if you know where that is. And then downhill from there, uh, a reservoir called the Mount Royal Reservoir, which also is no longer uh, here. It was where the on-ramp for Interstate 83 from North Avenue is today. Those were all working pretty well. They were all pulling water 
water from the Jones Falls, um, but it became pretty clear pretty fast that that was not adequate. And in the, during the Civil War, we had thousands of Union soldiers in the city, in addition to all of our residents. All of them needed water as well. And, and they helped spread diseases uh, through the cesspools that were created that reached down into people's wells. Although some people were able to tap into the reservoir system, many of us Baltimoreans were still on backyard well water that was uh, quickly becoming contaminated. Our city's response in 1865 uh, was to turn Lake Chapman into uh, Druid Hill Park Lake for a reservoir. Um, and that was pretty good, but that was still pulling water just from the Jones Falls. And in 1869, we began a four-year drought that really brought home the point that we needed uh, not just the Jones Falls to provide water. So in the 1870s, we began looking uh, to the Gunpowder River. And in 1881, we built Lake Montebello, 1888, Lake Clifton, and then 1899, this pumping station here that would then supplement uh, the water from the Jones Falls in uh, Druid Hill Lake uh, with water from the gunpowder. So uh, adding capacity to that system. Uh, our pumping station, when it was built, was uh, well, sort of state-of-the-art modern. One fun little fact is that one of the chief engineers, a gentleman named John Waldhouse, a few years before this station, open invented a steam powered automobile a three-wheeled machine that looks like it could hold about a dozen people uh, but he was clearly uh, inventing with steam even before this pumping station opened um, the pumping station worked pretty well most of the time although its main pump did fail in a severe heat wave in 1930 that killed uh, five people so it wasn't perfect but what did in the station in the end was not failing pumps but the construction of the Jones Falls uh, Expressway, the station was cleared to make way for the southbound lanes uh, of the new highway. Um, so it is gone, except for the little remnants that uh, remain behind me. But I'll uh, end by saying the next time you're driving southbound on the Jones Falls Expressway, uh, right at Nor uh, North Avenue, take a look down and say a little thanks to the Mount Royal Pumping Station that helped advance Baltimore's clean drinking water system. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.